Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about a show called Lo Que La Gente Cuenta. That show was my shit. I used to watch that show when I would be chilling at home on Saturdays. Cuando mi papá se ponía hasta la madre bumping el tri and Spanish rock. And I would be bored as fuck at home with nothing to do pues me ponía a ver ese pinche show así que lo que la gente cuenta was a mexican series that would talk about horror stories and it would cover a lot of legends I thought a lot of these episodes were super scary. It was created by Alejandro Rodriguez and would come out in the channel TV Azteca. The first episode aired in the year of 2005. Now the episode I'm going to be covering today is called El Coco and it was aired in 2009. I'm going to be doing my makeup so if you're gonna get ready let's get ready together or if you're just gonna chill clean drive lo que sea get ready because this story hasta hoy en día no me la puedo sacar de la cabeza for some reason I feel like this episode would come out a lot or I don't know if I'm tripping but they would play this episode a lot Así que este episodio, I low-key know it by heart. And it was one of my biggest spooky traumas. So in this episode, there's a single mom and her name is Araceli. She has a kid que se llama Héctor. And they just moved to a new apartment complex. Héctor vive con su mamá y su abuelita. Su abuelita se llama Juana. And then there's another guy named Angel. But we're gonna get into that in a bit. When the episode starts, Juana, the grandma, is tucking her grandson Hector in bed y le dice que ya se vaya a dormir porque si no le va a salir el coco. Al ratito. Pero si no te duermes, te verás que va a venir el coco y te va a comer. And I'm just like, bro, why do we do this to kids? When we're like, oh, ya duérmete porque te va a salir el cucú y o te va a jalar las patas la llorona. Like, why? Si ya sabemos cómo nos traumó todo eso, like, why do we do it? Es que los pinches niños a veces son bien cabrones, huh? I guess I'll never know until I'm a mom. Porque si mi hijo me tiene hasta la madre, le voy a decir, te va a salir el chaki. But anyways, the grandma is like, no te pongas a jugar and go to sleep. And the scary parts start already in this episode. The next morning, Hector's mom is getting him in trouble because he peed on the bed. Y él le cuenta a su mamá que se hizo pipí en la cama porque escuchó algo en el closet. Es que había ruidos en mi closet. ¿Ruidos? Sí. His mom, Araceli, is like, oh, it's probably a rat. They even checked the closet. Mira, ha de ser esa rata desdichada que no he podido encontrar. Ven, ven acá. After she checks the closet, closes the door and leaves, the closet door opens dramatically. The mom is at a bookstore and she likes reading scary stories y cosas de leyendas. She is just like us, for real. The guy from the library, his name is Angel. Well, he's trying to holla at her. Ah, chinga. This concealer is dark. <gasps> yes. And well, like I was saying, the guy from the library is trying to get at her. He's probably like, damn, she's not like other girls. She's a spooky queen. And he ends up inviting her to go get coffee. Así que la mamá fue a tomarse un café con Ángel. Y esa misma tarde, Juana, la abuelita, ends up going to church. The priest is talking to Juana. He's like, long time no see. Y le pregunta que cómo le está yendo en su nuevo hogar. The grandma is like, well, everything's good, but... My grandson has been saying that he keeps hearing noises in the closet. But they end up agreeing que yo creo no más son ideas de niños. And that he probably feels weird because he misses his old house. And dude, after they leave church, the priest hears a whistle. 
como si alguien pasó. Dude, ese chiflido por un momento me tenía espantadísima, dude. The grandma ends up walking home with her grandson Héctor and they bump into Araceli and Ángel. No, hombre, pues su mamá que se la hace de pedo. Con razón siempre andas tan ocupada. Um, she made it a big ass deal. She was like, oh, so this is why you're always out. And Araceli is a single mom, así que se vio mal para la mamá. Which is pretty fucking annoying. Bro, to be honest, I fucking hate when that happens. When something looks wrong and it's not how it really is. And moms take it the wrong way. Because she was like assuming that Araceli was always with him. And it's like, no, she just met him. Like, it's not that deep. I'm sure we've all been there. Nos vamos adelantando. And the mom... She's already giving him attitude and shit, like a suegra toxica. I'm like, bro, how embarrassing. Later that night, Hector is asleep and he starts screaming, saying that there's someone in his closet. And this comes out. Fuck no, dude. After that, se lo llevan al cuarto a dormir con su mamá. I'm gonna be going in with my eyeshadow palette from Huda Beauty. Esta se llama Naughty. So pretty. Oh, look at that. That's so pretty. And then the next day, Araceli goes to the bookstore or library. To be honest, I don't know what it is. But she goes to meet Angel and to apologize for the way that her mom acted. She's like, oh, my mom is stressing por la movida. And because my son Hector is stressing us out, he's always saying that he keeps hearing noises in the closet and in his bedroom and they don't know what to do anymore. And Ángel comforts her. Ángel is trying to be stepdaddy material. I see it. Así que las dos no le creen al pobre niño. Hasta que la abuelita está doblando ropa. She goes inside the closet to put the clothes in there and a frame falls from the wall of the room aggressively. Ay. Ay, Cuando le pasó eso, I was like, ándele. Por no creerle a su nieto. Lo tenían de loco, de que, ay, es que es... He's new. Está viendo cosas ni madres. El niño tiene la razón. And a fucking ghost or demon is about to take him. You would think that after this happened, she would believe her grandson, but nope. She doesn't believe him still. Meanwhile, this happens. Hector is in school. And when he's walking home, he hears el mentado chiflido. Doña Juana se va caminando a la iglesia y mira que una señora está hablando con el padre. And she busts a, no por ser chismosa, pero ¿qué le dijo esa señora? I'm like, <laughs> señora, no se haga pendeja si es chismosa, le gusta el chisme. Nah, I'm just kidding, ay pobre señora, huh? <laughs> But dude, she literally busts that and the priest tells him que esa señora is passing around flyers with her daughter's face because she has a missing daughter that she's trying to find. Oye, padre, yo no quiero que piense que soy una chismosa, una metiche, pero ¿qué le pasó a la pobre mujer que acaba de salir ahorita? And that's when el padre says, ¿cuándo va a pasar eso? Dios mío. And the señora is like, ¿por qué dice eso, padre? She's about to go away. Y el padre le dice that there's been kids going missing lately and they're never found that's when hector starts being even more extra poor little boy he doesn't even want to eat because of how scared he is y aparte el siente that nobody believes him no hombre este eyeliner ya me lo acabe ya me lo chingue ah no todavía aguanta todavía tiene para mi wing todavía aguanta unas dos tres puestas y ya 
La abuelita le habla a Héctor y le dice that he's probably imagining these things. Pero Héctor, él bien seguro. He's like, no, mire al coco. Lo he mirado en mi closet y quiere venir por mí. Ella le dice que no esté inventando cosas. He's like, lady, you're the one that told me this in the first place. Y es cierto porque in the beginning of the episode, she was like, ya duérmete o si no te va a salir el coco. Pues que ahora aguante. <laughs> Esa noche, Juana is asleep and she wakes up to the noise of a whistle. And she tells her nieto, why did you make that noise? Aren't you scared of that noise? Pobre niño, sale cagado. Oye, ¿por qué estás haciendo ese chiflido? ¿No me dices que te da tanto miedo? If you think this is scary, this is when things start getting worse. The grandma is brushing her teeth. Y el coco pasa por la puerta. <tose> Héctor is screaming under the sheets. Parece como que algo lo está ahogando. Por favor, reacciona, Araceli. Araceli. Ay, se está ahogando. Something was literally attacking the poor kid. And the mom thought it was a bad dream. And the next day, the grandma goes to church once again con el padre. Se va a confesar y le cuenta al padre que su nieto sigue diciendo que escucha sonidos en su closet y muchas cosas raras. El padre gets all weird and tells her to pray for her grandson. And then he's like, I gotta go. Tienes que rezar, hija. Rezar mucho por tu nieto. Y ahora perdóname, pero... Tengo que irme. The grandma gets home and she's cooking up some bomb ass frijoles. And guess what happens? The olla falls to the floor. Not the frijoles. Santificado sea tu nombre. ¡Ay! El coco is now messing with the frijoles. And then, Héctor sees a scary ass hand. Dude, El Coco just keeps getting closer and closer to him. Meanwhile, la mamá anda de caliente. <laughs> like literally, because <laughs> she's kissing Ángel outside y adentro de la casa hay un desmadre y ella ni en cuenta. Allí estaba. Pero qué pelota, a ver dónde está. Ya deja de inventar cosas para llamar la atención, por ver, favor. Ahora, y Ángel encuentra un costal por las escaleras. Pretty fucking weird, huh? Well, that same night, guess what happens to the poor kid? Luckily, they hear his screams and they go to check up on him. And the kid is on the floor. Like, ya lo estaba arrastrando en el piso para llevárselo. I'm gonna be using this blush from Colourpop. I like to put a little on the bridge of my nose. The next day, the grandma goes to church again, super concerned. Y le encuentra al padre lo que pasó el día anterior. This time, the padre ends up opening up. I'm like, dude, finally. Qué bueno porque él sabía que había algo. Because, come on, he was acting a little sus. I'm like, dude, just tell them. Me voy a poner este brillito aquí adentro. Es de tres luces. And it's in the shade Forever Brillante. By the way, my eyes look really big and a little creepy because I am wearing contacts. I'll leave the name of the contacts here because I do get a lot of questions about them. I love these because they look a little spooky but really cute and doll-like at the same time. So the padre ends up opening up and he says that years ago, a lot of kids went missing until people started bringing up a really old legend about a man who would rob kids to take them to hell and his name was el coco y dicen that when he's around you hear a whistle el mentado chiflillo he says that it got to a point where 
una vez otro padre que trabajaba con él lost his life que fueron a bendecir a un cuarto because el coco was haunting in there and he had to walk out of the room because he couldn't take the energy yo no pude más y tuve que salir So now he feels a little guilty because the other padre passed away y él no lo ayudó. The grandma is so scared and she's like, padre, me tienes que ayudar. Y llegan a un acuerdo, así que el padre va a bendecir el cuarto. Y esta parte, no, dude, no sé cómo chingaos dejaron que pasara esto en TV Azteca. Because what the fuck. Espíritu Santo. Cuando el padre está bendiciendo el cuarto, that shit looks like the fucking exorcist movie. The furniture starts shaking, books start falling, hasta se cae un libro y le da un putazo en la cara al padre. To make it worse, meanwhile, all of that is happening. Hector is in the room with his grandma. Why is the poor kid witnessing all of that? The priest ends up leaving and he's like, se tienen que ir. That they need to move away. I'm guessing El Coco was really going after Hector. So I guess there's not a way to stop him. And then there's a scene where Angel finds a book about leyendas and he finds a story about El Coco, also known as El Hombre del Costal. La gente empezó a contar historias sobre El Hombre del Costal y sobre la locura que lo obligaba a robarse a los niños para comérselos. It turns out that back in 1932, <laughs> Not really 1932. I forgot what day, but a long ass time ago, there was a guy who was actually a cannibal. And he would rob kids to eat them. Los indígenas lo nombraron el cojo, que significa daño. Dicen que they ended up killing him and his spirit came back, I guess, as a demon. So now, up to this day, he still robs kids. Un demonio que venía por las almas de los pequeños para devorarlas y llevárselas al infierno. Pero bueno, es lo que la gente cuenta. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Let me do my lips real quick because I look like I have a mustache. I love having dark lips or red lips. It makes me feel so powerful. So now the priest and Angel are trying to convince them to leave. So at this point, the grandma believes Hector, pero su mamá todavía no le cree. I'm like, lady, are you serious? Angel then goes to talk to the priest and tells the priest to please help Araceli and her family. But the priest, he's literally like, I'm out. Fuck this shit. He was even packing and everything. He was like, me voy de viaje, todo indignado. I'm like... He was fucking scared, dude. Pero le da una cruz a Ángel. And he's like, here, you need this. That night, Araceli is asleep. And she hears a whistle. She heard the whistle. I'm like, ándele. Ándele. Ahora sí. Por andar de que, ay, son cuentos. Ándele. A ver qué hace. So she hears the whistle and then she sees someone pass by. She thought somebody broke in. Así que le llama a Ángel en chinga. And she's like, somebody broke into my house. Ángel. Arceli. Por no creer y andar de caliente. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not really. She rushes to the room de su hijo y él está con su abuelita y le dice, I saw somebody inside of the house. She's convinced that somebody broke in. Y el niño le dice, yeah, he's here for me. ¿Qué pasa, mija? Hay algo espantoso allá afuera. Viene por mí, mamá. So they end up walking out the house 
praying. Así que están saliendo, rezando. Haga nosotros tu reino. Hágase, Señor, tu voluntad aquí en la tierra. Como... The kid está caminando detrás de ellas y voltean y ya no está. Dude, el coco se lo llevó. Se lo llevó. After that, they hear the screams and, dude, El Coco is dragging the kid everywhere. So they pull the kid by the arms and El Coco lo tiene de las patas. At this point, they're playing tug of war with the kid. The grandma is pulling the kid y se cae la abuelita. That's when Angel gets there with the cross y se pone a jalar al niño también. You won't believe what ends up happening. So they save Hector, but the abuelita, Juana, she dies. Pobrecita, dude, she died trying to save her grandson. Either that or El Coco took her. That's fucking sad, dude. She was a real one, dude, for real. Porque la mamá no le creía al niño. Y ya después de eso, sale otra escena to traumatize me again, talking about si no te duermes, te va a salir El Coco. And that is all for this episode of Lo que la gente now i don't know if this is a true legend or just a story that they made up for this show if you know please comment down below porque i want to know if i should get scared de, de veras pero pues si me gustaría saber also this is my final look to be honest i feel like a brat's rock angel i haven't really been wearing mascara aquí abajo i don't know why and yeah guys this is it for today's video if you liked it give me a thumbs up down below don't forget to like share comment and subscribe turn on your notification so you can get notified for the next time i post and i'll see you guys next time bye